and welcome everybody. So we're going to talk about deep foundations today. Specifically, we're going to go over elements of three different parts. Uh, we're going to talk about the uses of deep foundations uh, in part one, uh, how to work with the geotechnical engineer, uh, as well as some of the mechanics of deep foundations. After the Q&A session and the break, then we'll talk about uh, different types of deep foundations, uh, drilled piles, driven piles, etc. I'll go through the uh, IBC Chapter 18 requirements, uh, also uh, the CBC Chapter 18, primarily the seismic requirements, uh, and, uh, and talk about pile load testing. Then after the second break and Q&A session, uh, I will go through a design example for a uh, concrete pile foundation for a parking garage. So starting with part one, uh, why do we use deep foundations? Uh, generally speaking, we, we use them to transfer building loads uh, down to deeper competent soils. Uh, we use them to reduce building settlements in, in where soils are soft. Uh, and we also use them to resist uplift where necessary. If we have a very constrained area, sometimes deep foundations can be more advantageous than shallow foundations. And we also use them uh, on sites where we're subject to uh, consolidation or to liquefaction. Deep foundations require, uh, require that the structural engineer and the geotechnical engineer work together. Um, this is the interface of structures and geotechnics. And, uh, and so that's why it's advantageous for, for the SE and the GE to really work together. Um, it doesn't always work that way, but I'm, I'm an advocate of better collaboration. Uh, first of all, the, the soils report is usually prepared before any of the structural design is done. The geotechnical engineer will determine that piles are necessary for the project. Um, once the SE is on board, then the geotech will usually ask what typical loads for the foundation uh, are likely to be. And the geotechnical engineer can provide a report then with allowable pile loads for vertical and lateral loads. Based on these numbers, the, this, the structural engineer usually determines how many piles he needs at each location uh, based on the allowable loads that, that are indicated by the geotech. Um, and, uh, and also that, that includes both the vertical and the lateral requirements. The trouble with this process is, is that a lot of times there could be a, a range of possible vertical capacities. Um, the, the geotechnical engineer may, may just indicate, for example, that piles are good for 120 tons or whatever it happens to be. Uh, and the structural engineer will take that verbatim as a requirement for the project. Similarly, uh, with lateral resistance, oftentimes the geotechnical engineer will simply indicate uh, piles are good for 15 kips laterally, 20 kips laterally, whatever that happens to be, um, when really it's a much more complex process. With regard to, to vertical loading, the, the available capacity generally is a dependent of the length of the piles. Um, there are some cases where, where we're bearing piles directly on, on a very deep bearing layer or a bedrock or something, but in most cases, uh, piles resist the lows by by friction, and the deeper they go, the higher the capacity can go. It's pretty rare that the that the structural capacity of the pile uh, actually controls uh, the amount of load we can put on it. And so, really, it's the geotechnical design and the length of the pile that determines what the load is. So, the structural engineer and the geotechnical engineer can work together uh, to understand the relationship of capacity versus length, and then to determine uh, what what the the most efficient use is going to be. And what I recommend is a sensitivity analysis. Uh, within limits of geotechnical possibilities, uh, the, the structural engineer working with the geotech can, can see how many piles would be required for various capacities and then determine uh, what an efficient capacity is going to be. The lowest cost is generally going to come from limiting the number of piles. Um, if you look at where the costs come from in a deep foundation system, uh, you have some fixed costs such as mobilization, testing, overhead, uh, and then you have costs that are proportional to the length of the pile, that is how long it takes to install it and the cost of the materials themselves. You also have some costs that come from setup at each location as well as the, the cap volume. And so 
you get you can get some savings here if you can reduce the number of piles changing for example from a four pile cap to a three pile cap you've reduced the cap volume reduced the number of piles the amount of setup time it takes to install those piles